dispersion modeling. If you go back to the schematics of the similar tools, four different components. You have emissions, emissions, and then you get converted to concentrations. Concentrations are used to uh, calculate health impacts, and uh, all, the, all the information is used to do some op options analysis. The process of going from emissions to concentrations, this is called dispersion modeling. This is very often the bottleneck for most of the modeling studies or scenario analysis. We do dispersion modeling primarily to understand the contributions of various sources to the ambient pollution. So we have two different types of contributions. One, we have contributions of all these sources to the emissions and you have contributions of all these sources to the ambient pollution. Both of them are very different and uh, what's coming in between the difference is basically the because of the meteorological effects. Uh, the ground level sources contribute the most these uh, stacked emissions contribute less immediate to the, into the immediate region but they do have long range transport. So all those effects are accounted for in the dispersion modeling. So in the similar tool, uh, we have introduced something called the source receptor matrix. So this basically links emissions from each source to a receptor point. Conceptually speaking, if we had a grid for, say if this is our city, has a grid of 10 by 10, we will run a dispersion model with emissions in one grid only and see what is the impact of these emissions on the entire domain. So we do the same thing, Another, we select another grid and then we say, okay, if emissions are all in this grid, then what will be the impact of that in the other grids? Similarly, another one, similarly, another one. If we had a 10 by 10 grid domain, this will result in a 100 by 100 matrix. For every grid, we run this model. And if we had a 5 by 5 grid, then we'll be having a 25 by 25 matrix. So, uh, if we take this into Excel, then we can use it for a quick conversion of our emission grid emissions into gridded concentrations. So, the idea is if we had to go through the usual process, so we have, we will calculate out all our total emissions, then we run a dispersion model and we do the, we have the concentrations and use it for something else. The which usually, the dispersion modeling usually takes um, hours or days or weeks depending on type of model being used. If we had a uh, source receptor matrix, then we could do this whole thing in uh, seconds. And that's our advantage. But this methodology has its limitations. Um, this is not uh, the final answer and uh, one matrix doesn't fit all. So every city, every region, every grid setting had to, has to be processed separately and uh, a matrix has to be built separately. And if there are facilities to conduct dispersion modeling in full scale, one should do that and not use this methodology for calculating the process. But having said that, it, give, it allows you to do some rapid assessment of uh, what are the major sources contributing, what are the contributions, what kind of impacts are we expecting and what are the different types of options available that can be studied further. The dispersion modeling itself, where a, from which a transfer matrix is developed, there are many models, but in general the principles are the same. Every model will have these principles. You have emissions. There will be some dry deposition, there will be some wet deposition, and whatever is remaining basically moves on. Three different types of models. You have box model, Gaussian model, and Eilerian models. Um, I will not go into the technical details of each of these, just to show you some schematics of how these things look. A box model is a whole region or a city resumed as a box, and your concentration is basically a mass over volume. And Gaussian plume model it basically assumes that your uh, emissions come out either from the, at the source level or the ground level or stacked emissions and depending on the wind profile they move on in different directions and you basically do these calculations for every source and at the end just add them up uh, into different grids and you have a gridded concentration field. So here uh, one assumes that there is no interaction between the sources. 
and of course you have at the end the Eilerian model this is the most complicated and comprehensive modeling system this is not running at a uh, at one grid level but it's running in 3d so you have interactions at the in the x direction y direction and z direction and it takes into account a lot of different processes not just the advection that is the physical movement of the emissions but also looks at uh, chemical transformation and and advection between grids uh, which means using this model for calculations the time taken will be much much longer so if we go back to the the simair tool the conversion of these emissions is happening from emissions to concentrations if you browse to the end of this worksheet we do have three different four different types of transfer matrices in, included so this is for pm cores means this is the transfer matrix for pm between the size fractions of 2.5 and 10 and then you have pm fine which is everything under 2.5 we have nitrate formation and sulfate formation so we can include both primary and secondary contributions to the total PM10 or PM2.5 concentrations and these matrices has to be developed separately so in the demo version we put only four but in uh, actual calculations we do calculate this transfer matrices separately for area sources which is ground level sources separately for a point source and another layer for large point sources so all these combined we, we can do some matrix multiplications and you have emissions going to concentrations there is one simplified atmospheric transport modeling system this is Atmos 4 this model has been used for many many applications in Asia uh, for urban and rural, rural settings we use this to develop the transfer matrix uh, for the SIMAIR tool and uh, this website on at urbanemissions.info if you search for Atmos 4.0 it will give you more details on the model settings general limitations and also a version of the model to download with the manual and uh, and how to use one of the working paper series in uh, SIMAIR actually has more details of uh, the tool of the model itself uh, how to download, how to install and uh, how to uh, convert the results into a transfer matrix that can be used in the Excel spreadsheet. In the Excel spreadsheet, this in the demo version is a 5x5 five five example. We did find that within Excel the limitation is a 40x40 40 40 grid domain. If, we, if you exceed that 40x40 40 40 limit, uh, you have higher chances of crashing Excel but anything lower than that it seemed to work okay of course if you have a bigger computational capacity then um, it should work fine so if, if you have more uh, questions on how the dispersion modeling works or how to use other other dispersion models to put together a transfer matrix that you can use please send an email